honestly was like props to Gen Z because with social media and everything else, I genuinely had no idea if he was gay or straight. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dan. What's your name? <laughs> Nick. Yes. Um, and today we thought we'd come back with another one of our serious videos. So, um, what we were thinking of um, talking about today is about more or less kind of like the stereotypes and tropes um, that we all know and love. Yes, gay culture is chock full of stereotypes and for a culture that's supposed to be like accepting and fluid, everybody's constantly trying to put you in a category. I think every day we probably get, what do you think, like 50 plus comments that say top and bottom? Yeah, yeah, it's actually pretty aggressive and I think Part of the reason why we kind of want to broach this subject is because we feel as though there's kind of some dissonance between like how we all want to be treated either special or like equal I guess but at the same time we're kind of constantly shoving each other into boxes <laughs> um, and it's not like it really has bothered us really um, but it just at one point it kind of becomes like at one point what, where's that line? Yeah, I mean, I, I like I think of something that's recently been happening to us uh, is we are obviously a gay couple and we are also late 20s, early 30s and shh, don't tell anyone I'm 22. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Everybody around us is having kids because uh, most of our friends are straight and there's like this thing where people want to call you a gunkle. Uh, and it personally drives me crazy because it's like it's just irritating I think I don't know like I'm not I don't gay park my car I'm not a gay uncle if I'm an uncle I'm an uncle um, Dan that's Dan's behind the car <laughs> parking thing I don't gay cook my dinner like I just I'm like a person and uh, my sexual orientation doesn't need like a letter at the in front of everything uh, I feel like we just need to dichotomize I feel like language in a sense because I I do understand the point. Let's just claim that like disclaimer. We I do understand the point of like assigning you know um, certain differentiators for us to be clear with our language. That's not what we're saying. I feel like we've become we've become so to your point attached to the idea that like now our existence and this is what we were talking about on our last video, which is our existence becomes second to our sexuality. So our sexuality becomes the dominant thing that drives our existence. We are getting gay married and so just married. Um, we well, are- I mean, on that, like, like gay married, uh, this actually might be my most, I, I have labels, I don't, I, like there's so many labels, but when you talk about like marriage and stuff like that, people call it a union, they call it a partnership. Um, but for me, the place where that like drives me most wild uh, is when some, like, he's my boyfriend and that I'm like, it, my boyfriend. But people like partner, even in the gay community, like you have to be a partner. Uh, like the socially acceptable thing to say is partner. The reality is he's my boyfriend. Uh, but why we have to call him a partner to feel safe for everyone, it drives me crazy. Like he's my boyfriend, partner is like this weird, awkward word to me. I hate that word. Uh, like call it what it is, boyfriend. Just like if I had a girlfriend, girlfriend. Uh, if we get married, husband, wife, like that's what it is. That's like the clearest term. Partner is very confusing. Like partner, are we business partners? Uh, <laughs> are we like, are we getting playing tennis in pairs? Like, what is this? Um, and I think that's like the point of this subject here today is to just cover labels in general. And that fact that in gay culture, you need to be labeled for literally everything. I don't think, uh, well, I'm gonna rephrase a little bit what you said. It's not that you need to be labeled, it's that you are labeled. And in your introduction to gay culture, you are labeled, you're appended with labels. And it's more that you don't need to be labeled. You can actually kind of free yourself from those labels. To his earlier point, I think from the from our early experiences, we did that we made that mistake of like calling each other partners because we were also just really unsure about how to like call each other with our colleagues, etc., which we'll cover in another video. But you can free yourself from those. So I think like you wanted to start with someone, some very obvious one. This is based on our comment section. Yeah, let's lead in with like the elephant in the room. 
Uh, the number one thing about being gay that you run into is sexual labels. Like you are sexually labeled and people like try and jam that down your throat. Like, I mean, we opened with it. Top or bottom is like the most, or like masculine and feminine. Like, but like, those are the most egregious labels I can like, you have to have them as if that is like cut and dry, black and white, your top, your bottom, like you're put into these categories. Um, and I don't think that over the course of a life or a relationship, any one of those things, those things is realistically ever completely static. Um, nor do I think it, it's fair to like push people into those like swim lanes and bubbles and then expect them to build their relationships around what these preferences are and what these labels are. Because uh, I don't think going into a relationship with a focused mindset where you're not open to what the relationship is um, because you've been stuck in a category and you must find a relationship that fits that category. I just don't think it's a, a healthy way to dive into a relationship. It also causes you to set these relationships up that are entirely based on sex. Uh, and sex is an important part of a relationship, it's an important part of life, but you can't expect to make your entire relationship based on this category you've been placed in. Um, and as a result of that, I think in the, gay, in the gay culture, you see a lot of couples that break up um, because they're just over sex. Well, I think you just see them break up a lot of times because their relationship is sex-based out the gate instead of like, who is somebody that I, I want to be my best friend that I want to experience life with. Uh, and then sex is a piece of that, but not a dictating factor of it. And in gay culture, that's sort of like what happens with sexual labels is we base our entire life off of how we have to have sex. Uh, we base our entire relationship off of that and people's perception of you is also based on that. And it makes it a very impossible, frankly, thing to keep up because at the end of the day like you're gonna change you're gonna shift you're gonna have different wants and desires you're gonna have things outside of sex you want from life and you can't base everything on that i also think that it, it's obviously not to say that it's not about being not being sex positive like if you want to like if you want to take these labels and really like play with them and own them that's great but to nick's point and i really very much agree with it it's the fact that like we but when it comes to like meeting somebody, that's the first thing that we have. We have strangers on the internet. Even I, I, you know, like even as single people, like I experienced it whenever I was an out man before meeting Nick in social media. You know, we we all experience it. We the first thing that we are pended with is our sexual position and kind of like the potential for us being a sexual mate in the bedroom. So. You know, so before they even know you, yeah, they want to know how they're gonna have sex with you, uh, and then they, they want to determine that whether this is a successful relationship or not, even if they might not even personally like you when they meet you, uh, based on how they see you in the bedroom. You know uh, what? Like the the funny part is for me is that whenever they like take it a step further and they don't even ask you if you're top or bottom, but if they like immediately just assume that you're one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like a serious problem. I think it has a massive impact on relationships and people seeing themselves in a healthy relationship um, because it just it judge they're ju everyone's judging a book by its cover and then making relationship choices based on that cover uh, and not even chasing after the other books because they don't they think the cover doesn't look right. Um, which also actually very nicely segues into we have a list of topics so we don't get too sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> Visual labels. Uh, so you get labeled as daddy, twink, otter, bear. Dan probably knows more of these labels than me. Um, there's just the whole zoo. Yeah, like <laughs> you. Yeah, the whole zoo. Uh, and that's your label, and that's your type, and that's your focus, and it's the only thing people. Um, you just end up like, oh, I, I'm only going to look at people that fit into this category. Or somebody might not even want to be in that category as a person, but just their fit their image, they immediately just get pushed into the, the twink category, uh, the daddy category, the home category. Um, and there's there's probably a lot of older men that don't want to be daddies. Like they want a real partner. They don't want a sugar baby. Uh, and there's also probably a lot of really ambitious young men that don't want to be sugar babies and don't want to be labeled that uh, if the person they date is slightly older than them. Um, or just looks older than them, honestly. They don't even have to be older than them, just look older. And then you, it's like, oh, there's the daddy and there's the, the trigger baby. And then they'll probably get labeled with similar sexual positions that most commonly match up with those things. Um, you know, the hilarity of it all is that all of those things that you just mentioned, like if you were to look at like a 
porn site legitimately those are all tagged like let's be uh, honest here so we're like, rape basing our relationship on porn text yeah <laughs> like that's like what it is um and to your point it's really funny too because you see like young successful men who happen to be gay and immediately everybody assumes that they have a sugar a sugar daddy yeah um or they're a sugar baby and it's ridiculous it's actually ridiculous whether they are or not i guess that's their problem but at the same time like why the heck do we assume that everyone is and the whole i think like a core piece of the lgbtq plus community is this idea that you can be what you want to be you can be free of stereotypes and traditional standards um so the fact that we have to label across the board with very specific names i mean even that there are more letters to the that entire acronym actually uh than i even thought of because we need to add all the labels in instead of just being people uh and worrying about what makes us happy what gets us excited what makes us sad like those are the things that matter figuring the rest of it out honestly is just like part of life and it's going to change and be fluid as you go yeah. uh, i think like speaking of fluidity actually i think uh, yeah. one of my favorite topics is masculinity versus femininity like those especially as a person who has struggled a lot with just accepting my feminine side you see me right now like with a sports jacket which i, I really like to dress you know i have feminine I think qualities and aspects both in my personality and just the way that I dress and embracing those is really really hard and I feel like in a sense you know like we still make the mistake of assigning feminine because of everything that we've spoken about assigning the feminine qualities as the weaker ones as the bottom ones as the power bottom ones as the using all of those labels and appending them and tagging people because of the qualities that they show. In reality, like personally and experientially, I love certain things about like that that I guess would encompass a gay man's trope in the sense of uh, how he dresses, but at the same time, I am not defined by that and I feel like I'm constantly trying to like people are trying to constantly define me by that. Um in our videos, so once that we constantly publish you know if i have my rings on or my you know or whatever the way that i'm behaving sometimes well i have a great one it's it's insane whether i shave or not yeah whether you shave or not oh that's what do you think like or... 20 times a day at least somebody comments on whether my armpits are shaved that day or not uh like cuz it that is not super masculine to shave and yeah, so that that is a, like almost as common a comment as top or bottom it's ridiculous it's, it's actually and i don't nice. even understand it Uh, and sometimes it's just the camera is like not actually picking up that yeah, because your hair is very fair. Your hair yeah. is very fair. But I think of like the other thing I'm thinking of is I was in a just like story time I guess, but I was in a right. snowmobile shop the other day. Snowmobiles and like dirt bikes like what is traditionally rugged man stuff. And I went up to the counter and the guy behind the counter had pierced ears, a pearl necklace and painted nails. And I honestly was like props to Gen Z cuz with social media and everything else I genuinely had no idea if he was gay or straight because they are like just breaking the glass ceiling there like they're just completely changing their perception and saying like what I like is what I like and this mask versus them it's coming honest to god fluid uh and I saw that kid there and I was just like so much respect for him to be in a place like that in like middle of new hampshire like a lot of place and just like holding his own and doing what he likes and dressing how he likes and it's just like it's a different world that's being created by social media and sort of like opening up people's eyes and i think there's a lot of amazing things that come come from that but seeing that in a place like that to me it, it honestly just i was genuinely excited to see it because it's such a refreshing thing to see i do think that everybody's entitled to their own fantasies everybody's entitled to their own tastes everybody's entitled to whatever their likes are i think voicing them constantly um and pegging other people with those isn't not okay. I think it crosses a boundary at one point where like you're entitled to have your own taste. However, that doesn't make other people responsible to accommodate you for them. Um so, you know, like it's cool if you like a bearded man who's hairy all over. That's not me. Hairy all over. No, no, no. That I've just said that's not you. Your that's absolutely out. not you. <laughs> Yeah. So like 
that's great. I mean, that, that I guess that's what, what I was getting to is that like, okay. what you like and dislike has doesn't have to do with your sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to do with your sexual position. It's like that's kind of like what we're getting to here. Uh, ultimately, is like you can have likes and dislikes that don't fit into specific categories. That don't like what you like and what you look like, the type of person you like. None of that has to also tie to your sexual orientation, the positions you like in bed. None of that has to matter. And it's such an impossible standard as a gay couple uh, or just a young gay man trying to find a relationship to find a relationship and then align that person they view with every single stereotype that the world expects of them. And it makes it so that you're constantly looking at a relationship for potentially the wrong reasons because you're too worried about the stereotypes and the labels that culture has created for you, that society has created for you. So you're so worried about those labels that you forget to look for the things that make you happy. You can forget to look for the things that you care about. You forget to look for the qualities that are going to give you, you a long lasting, healthy relationship, somebody that's going to build you up and make you better and support you. Speaking of like these stereotypes and tropes, I think along those lines, you are not defined by what anybody, and this is more towards what, you know, those people who are just entering the community or who are younger, who, um, you know, more or less could potentially look for that guidance. But, you know, in social in media, not social media necessarily, but like overall media, we're bombarded with, or what we've bombard, been bombarded with since, uh, for the most part, is, you know, the gay man is gay best friend, and he's more or less like, Hey, the, you, the supporting character to the main character um, um, or he's the fashionista and he's supposed to know fashion he's supposed to um, know how to interior decor and he's supposed to have an aesthetic and he's supposed to like do not feel pressured to fall into those tropes and to fall into those stereotypes if you are a person that absolutely has no eye for aesthetic or whatever it is or if you really don't all you want to do is dress in, in like sweatpants and a hoodie, and that's your sense of fashion. Or flannel and jeans. Yes. With tussled hair. <laughs> this is more just personal with you, but don't feel uh, pressure. That, to, to your do skills it. don't also align with your sexual orientation, I guess is what we're getting to, is like, you don't have to be good at fashion. It doesn't mean you can't like cars. You just. It doesn't mean that you have to like certain things. You don't have to like fem what is deemed as feminine things. Mm -hmm. uh, and even for a young woman, like they can like masculine. The women can like cars. They can like all sorts of stuff. Um, it's just trying to make these labels that people want to put you in. Put they take these buckets they want to put you in, and make all those buckets fit in your ideal relationship bucket is, is physically impossible. Just worry about what makes you happy. If you mix and match and crisscross across all the different labels and none of it makes any sense, don't worry about it. Like, yeah. what makes you happy is what matters. If you want to find a good relationship, I really think you should just like, try your best to break all the molds. Just be yourself. Yeah. That's the point here. Like, that. This is that's the title or that's the, the moral of this story is uh, don't care about the labels. Yeah. If they empower you, take them. If they don't, throw them away. Yeah, use Doesn't the matter. labels you like, don't use the ones you yeah, don't like. like if you don't want to be called partners, you want it to be your boyfriend, call it your boyfriend. Tell people that's what it is. Um, if you don't want to be the uncle, then say, I, I'm not the uncle. Like, I don't gay uncle. Uh, I'm not anyone's uncle yet, by the way, I think. So <laughs> I'm going to avoid that as long as I can. Because um, um, that sounds really old to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, the one last little thing bit that I wanted to cover, as always, these series of videos are just a conversation opener. That does not mean that we have all the answers. That does not mean that whatever we say here isn't an opportunity for us to grow as well. We want to hear from you. I think we got a lot of good feedback on our first video that we did introducing these series, um, trying to talk about these topics. And I would like to hear that feedback, the same type of feedback in the comment section as well. Yeah. Open up discussions within yourselves in the community uh, because I feel like they, they help us grow as well. I grew from reading some of the comments in the last one. And yeah, please do comment below. Like the whole point of the series is to be an open forum and have a discussion because we definitely don't have the answers. Uh, and as much as we hope we're helping people from this video or like giving some sort of a conversation, we love to hear people that don't have different opinions or have a different viewpoint 
um, or just more advice to share because this like that really needs to be an open forum and people talk about this type of stuff more. Um, so we love your comments. Please share them. Um, also, please like, subscribe and follow us here so we can have more conversations like this and reach more people. Uh, every like and every time someone subscribes or follows us, our audience grows and we can reach more people. And hopefully Royal, Royal Corp, Corp grows. We're yeah. gonna need to buy a bigger pallet at some point at the 100K, so get us there. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, keep sharing yeah. our content too. And hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a brand new video. You can also find us in TikTok and on Instagram. Nick will say Twitter, but yes. we are not active there. Twitter! But you, <laughs> you can follow us there. Um, and that was it for this video. Thank you guys so much, as always, for all of your attention. If you made it all the way through, huge, huge hug to you. And a huge kiss. We love you. Thank you. Bye. Comment, comment more video ideas below for this, for this series, for sure. Thank you, everybody. Bye.